Welcome to Lamins.com in our lab video series on Cisco ASA CX. You can find complete lists of ASA CX video on our website by clicking on the link above and sign up for our newsletters to receive the latest video updates. Cisco ASA CX for the most part can be configured individually, but once you have multiple CX to manage, it might become more cumbersome to do it that way. And this is where the Cisco Prime Security Manager or Prism Server comes into play. So Prisms allows you to manage multiple CX and ASA devices, including those being configured as a failover pair, by centralizing policies, configurations, and components to help you keep the CX configuration consistent across your network. Now just keep in mind though that the Prism servers actually requires a separate license, and this is in addition to the regular CX licenses. So in this video, we're going to be installing a Prism server on the VM from scratch. So for the prerequisites for this lab, you need to download the .ova file of the Prime Security Manager and the version that you want to install from cisco.com. And you then also want to probably check the Cisco install documentation for the Prism servers to figure out the VM sizing. And this is the page right here for Cisco Prime Security Manager installation. If you scroll a little bit further down, you see this table that pretty much to dictates this amount of the CPUs, memories, and disk space, depending on the number of devices that we'd like to uh, the prime to manage. As you can see for the 10 devices, 20 devices, up to 100 devices. And if you scroll further down, you can see the firewall requirements, if you happen to have firewalls, between the Prism servers and the CX as far as what ports you need to have opened. So just make sure that you check out these documents before proceeding. And then lastly, obviously, you need to have your ESXi host that you would want to install your Prism VM on. Okay, for us, we're going to be performing an installation from our RDP session to our domain controller right here. So look at this diagram. We're just going to be concentrating on the Prism installation right here within this green circle. So we will be installing a Cisco Prism 931 at the IP of .105 on the same VLAN as our domain controller here, VLAN 32, the IP 172.16.32.0. And then you also need the standard network services like NTPs and DNS as well. All right, so let me bring up the RDP to our domain controller here, already have locked into our ESXi box. And to start the installation, you go to File and then Deploy the OVF template. And then all you need to do is just to point to the locations of the OVA files. You can see right here, this is the file we downloaded from cisco.com, prism vm 9311 ova And this has to be located on your local system where you launch your vSphere client. Click Next. And just do a quick review, the size and the size of the disk. If you do thin provision, it's going to be 1.3 gig, as opposed to thick provision, which is almost 300 gig. Click Next, Accept. The agreement, click next. Then you give it a name. We're just going to call it LM Prism 1. Next, then we select the data store you want to install the server on. You're just going to use the local data store. Click next. Here you have a choice to pick whether a thin or thick provision. As always, in production, you always want to choose thick provision. But since we are doing a lap install here just to save ourselves some disk space, we're going to choose thin provision, but again, never do that in production. Okay, for the destination or the network, we're going to drop the into VLAN 32 right here for the server, and then we'll click finish. Okay, then we give it a couple seconds for the VM to be deployed. So I'm going to go ahead and pause the video real quick and come back when it's completed. Okay, now that our VM has been deployed, so let me close that out. And before we actually start the VM, let's take a quick look. As far as the specifications of the VM, you can see that the OVA gives you the memory of 4 gig, the two CPUs, and two hard disks. The first one is about 40 gig, and this is primarily for the application. And then you have hard disk number two, which is about 250, 260 uh, gig, and that's for the all uh, the event and locking and reporting. Okay, one NIC card, and by default, it's the LSI. Uh, logic uh, parallel for the SKC controller. Okay, just to do a quick comparison to the documentations that we have, this pretty much gives you the default values right here, two core, four gig memory, and then two uh, hard drives. Right? If you need to support more devices, then definitely adjust your VM resources accordingly, according to this table right here, before you start the VM. 
All right, so click OK and then go ahead and start the VM. And let me bring up the console. Okay, so this is going to take a couple minutes. So we're going to let that run while I pause this video and I'll come back when we are ready to go through the configuration setup. So the first part of the installation is completed and we are now at the point that we're being asked for the admin user password. So here we're going to enter the password. Make sure you review the complexity requirements. So we're going to type in the password and then confirm the password. It looks like I have a typo there. Let's try that again. Okay, there you go. The password has been changed and now we are starting to go through the setup wizard. So enter the host name. For us, we're going to call it lm-prsm1. Do we want to configure IP address? We'll set yes for IPv4. Do we want to use DSCP for IPv4? Set no. And then for the IP address, we set our server is going to have the IP of 172.16.32.105. And then the net mass is 24. Gateway is a dot one of the same subnet. We do not want to configure IPv6 at this time. We'll say no. The primary DNS server is our domain controller, which is 172.16.32.40. We do not have a secondary DNS server, so say no to that. Yes, we want to configure local domain name, and for us, it's labminutes.com. For search domain, yes. And we also are going to do labminutes.com. And for NTP server, it's going to be our core switch. We're just going to point to our default gateway, which is 32.1. Actually, it's going to be yes, my bad. And the IP is 32.1. We do not want to do the NTP authentication, we'll say no to that. Okay, then you can review the parameters and then say yes if you want to apply the change. And if you went through the CX configuration setup wizard, you can see that it's pretty much identical to what we saw when we back in the CX service installation video. And if you think about it, it's, uh, on the CX, it's also running the Prime Security Manager as well, although it's only for that one device, but here we are dealing with the server. Okay, so now that our, all of our parameters has been configured on the CX, we are being presented with the lock-in prompt. So let's go ahead and lock in. And we are now on the Prime Security Manager 931 server. Okay, I'm just gonna Configure one more thing, which is changing the time zone. So if you do show time right now, by default is UTC. So you probably want to, if you desire, to change the time zone to the corresponding time zone as of where you, uh, where you located. Then you do the config time zone. Okay, and then from the menu, just look at your location for us is US, which is 17. And then we are on the Pacific side, so 11. And we want to go ahead and restart the process manager. And when that comes back up, we should be able to lock into the Prism server web interface. And it's trying to bring up a web browser. We're just going to use the Mozilla Firefox here. And I kind of have a bookmark created for that already, which is lm-prism1 right here, the IP of 32.105. And since we are able to see the certificate warning, our server should be up and running. And we should be getting a login page right here. And let's go ahead and log in with our admin account with the password that we set during the setup just now. Let's go ahead and log in. And here you can see that we can successfully log into the web interface of our Prism server we just installed. Okay, so at this point we have our Prism server up and running. The next thing that we're going to do is start adding the device that we would like our Prism server to manage. And that will be our next video. So that wraps up our video on ASA CX Prime Security Manager installation. You can visit our website to view an extensive list of our lab videos and sign up to get access to additional lab contents. Thank you for watching labnews.com and I'll see you guys in the next video.